Hello again. I finally finished the shortlist for the Women's Prize for Fiction and I've read the final one that I was waiting to get from the library, Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. And it's another one that I've really enjoyed. Funnily enough, the only two books that I've given five stars to are the ones that didn't get onto the shortlist. So what is that telling me about my reading? I don't know. But I, I enjoyed this one and it's a very brave book about mental illness really. Um, we've got Martha and right at the beginning of the book her husband Patrick leaves her two days after the 40th birthday. After a 40th birthday party and then we go back and we have the story from when Martha was 14 and meets Patrick for the first time and it is almost although we know that they got married because it tells us that at the beginning of the book it's almost like a love story a sort of will they won't they because you you sort of trace their relationship and as Martha says at 17 it's like a little bomb goes off in her brain and from that moment on she has these periods of absolutely crushing depression. She can't get out of bed, she can't do anything, she has mood swings and she is almost unable to function when she's in these these lows. And what I thought was very clever was that when she she gets this diagnosis because she goes through doctor after doctor, psychiatrist after psychiatrist. She has pills, potions. She has all sorts given her. And when she finally gets a diagnosis, we are not told what it is. The reader is not told what it is. It is just two long dashes. Which I thought was very clever because it's almost as though the author is saying, you know, it doesn't need a label because at all all of us at some points in our lives we do have these really black times so why does everything have to have a label and she doesn't give it a label Martha we laugh with her we cry with her she is a character that you get to know throughout the book. Her family, you've got her father who's an unpublished poet, you've got a mother who's a sculptor, she takes discarded items and tries to repurpose them in something wonderful. And she's got her sister Ingrid who she is really close to. Ingrid is her rock and Ingrid has her own family. Um, she's a mother. And this is her family. She's also got an aunt and uncle, um, Aunt Winsome and Uncle Roland, who are the wealthy side of the family. And it's almost as though they, they top up the finances for Martha's family. I wouldn't say it's a close family. She's close to Ingrid, but she's not close to really the rest of the family. And the the repartee between her and Ingrid, it is so witty. It is so funny. But then you've got the heartbreak when it, Martha is in these black moods. And sometimes you just want to hug her and sometimes you just want to scream at her. So just pull yourself together. What are you doing? But like Ingrid, you're are there on her side. I loved it. It was a really good book. Um, I'm going to have to come back in a couple of days. I'm going to have to look at all my notes for the six on the short list and give you my prediction, which will be wrong, considering that my five stars didn't even make the short list. So I will give you um, my prediction in a couple of days time. And um, then you can sort of laugh at me when I get it all wrong. So happy reading. Take care. Bye. -bye.